Hello and welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while. I'm really late on this video. This is my July book wrap up um, and it's already halfway into August. So yeah, um, July was kind of crazy and the start of August was kind of crazy so I just didn't get to it right away. Uh, I'm getting to it now because I'd like to get it out before the end of August because I would like to do an August book wrap up at the end of August. Um, we'll see how that goes. But I had a pretty good reading month in July. I think I read a total of five books and I got a couple of them from the library which was really awesome. And yeah, so I'm just gonna go through what I read uh, in order of like least liked to most liked. So yeah, so I'll just start off with two of the ones that I got from the library and I don't have them with me obviously because they were library books, but uh, the first one was Tangle of Knots by Lisa Graff, and it's a children's book, and I don't know why it was on my list, but on Goodreads I have a list of books that I want to check out from the library, and this was on there. Uh, I think I read it on a different list at some point where it was like children's books that are really whimsical, and that's kind of how I would describe it. It's, it's whimsical. It's very... Um, it's a magical realism book, but it's a children's book. Uh, so that was interesting because I, I actually really like magical realism and I read a lot of young adult magical realism and adult magical realism. So it was kind of nice to read a, a children's literature ma magical realism. And I, I don't really know how to describe it without spoiling it too much, but there's, in this world, it's just, you know, it's like, everyday America um, and but people have gifts and it's like you know somebody's like the best baker or like um, somebody crochets really well and and so it, it could be something either really really kind of useful like baking's kind of useful or it could be something kind of not useful like one person's special talent is spitting they're really good at spitting um, and so that's kind of the setup, and the situation is that there are a bunch of these different characters that end up in this one location for various reasons, and it's kind of how their stories intertwine. I really liked it. I thought it was, I guess, a kind of whimsical. Um, I think that I would, I would definitely recommend it to children who are maybe a little past, like, the you know, the picture book stage, but maybe not quite ready for something like a Harry Potter. Because um, it's a little simple in its storytelling, but that's part of the point of it, I think, because it's a children's book. Uh, but it is a chapter book. It's um, like two or three hundred pages, so it's pretty long. And yeah, it was really quick. I read it in a day. Um, I really liked her writing style. It was... Uh, very, um, well, the, like I said, there's one, there's one character who bakes, and I felt like when she described the cakes, it was like, my mouth is watering because of the description, and it was also kind of cool because she included recipes for each of the cakes, which was nice. Um, I might have to, like, go back and check it out just so I can scan some of those recipes, because they sounded pretty good. Uh, so yeah, so that was, I don't, that wasn't the first book that I read in, in July, but it's the first one that I'm talking about right now. So yeah, so that was good. I gave it, I think I gave it three and a half out of five stars. Um, no reason for n not, like, the n five star rating wasn't, it didn't blow me away. So it was like, well, I don't want to give it five stars. Four stars is usually like, it blew me away, but there were some issues and it didn't blow me away. So it's like a three and a half out of five stars. But something that I, like I said, I would definitely recommend to, kids maybe like in the 8 to 11 range um, yeah or maybe like if they're already advanced readers that are younger than 8 um, so yeah so I enjoyed it next I'm gonna talk about uh, The Devil and the Bluebird by Jennifer Mason Black um, I had not really been wanting to read this because I I saw the cover, thought the cover was gorgeous, and then I read the description I was like, oh man, this sounds great. It's a Crossroads Devil story. Um, and 
Yeah, it was also a library book and it was interesting because it was my first library book that was an ebook. Uh, I used, I forget what the, I think it's OneDrive is the app that you use. And uh, yeah, it was, it was interesting. I'm not a big ebook reader, uh, just because I look at a computer all day long and I don't want to look at a computer screen when I'm reading. But this was the only way that I could get it from the library and it was kind of cool to use that uh, particular service. So yeah, it was, this one I had a, l a few more issues with. I think I also gave it a three and a half out of five stars and um, yeah, it just, some of the writing was really good. It was another magical realism book, which I'm just realizing now. Um, and I liked that, and I liked the kind of devil, demon aspect of the story, and I liked the supernatural elements. There was a really creepy scene, and I really liked that. But there was, I felt like there was a little bit of a disconnect in connecting the main story to those elements. And it also felt like, like it felt like it kind of wanted to be a horror story, but then it also wasn't really. And then it like, there were some things that were happening that in the context of the world didn't really make sense and never really got explained. and. It just, some of it felt incomplete, um, and then some of it felt very heavy-handed. Um, you know, it's kind of like a, a story of sin and, and mistakes, and sometimes it felt a little heavy-handed in the messaging. So overall, I enjoyed it for the most part. Uh, I don't want to own it or reread it ever again, and I don't know that I would really recommend it to a lot of people because it is kind of a, it's young adult magical realism, but it's also not, like, I don't know that there are many people that would be interested in that kind of story. Um, so yeah, so it was fine. It was, like I said, I, I enjoyed parts of it. It was a pretty quick read. Uh, the writing was some of the writing was so great. I'm just thinking about the one scene that was so creepy and it was so well done. And I actually had to reread it immediately after because I was like, wait, did that just happen? Yes, that just happened. But then some of the plot lines didn't really work. And so, yeah, it's just, I felt like, like I said, very disconnected and a little bit incomplete. Uh, but something that I'm happy that I read. So... So that's, that's good, right? <laughs> Next, I have the first book that I actually have with me, which is Wired by Julie Garwood. I have been looking forward to this Julie Garwood book for quite a while. Uh, she is pretty much the only romance author that I will read. Uh, I'm not a big romance fan, but I love her writing. And she was supposed to come out with this book a couple years ago. And I think she had some health issues or she had some family issues and uh, it got delayed and delayed and delayed. And so this might very well be her last book. Um, so I, which would make me sad because I really like her writing. But it also makes me sad because I didn't really enjoy it that much. Um, I mean, we'll start off with positives. Uh, it's Julie Garwood. so. The characters are pretty good, the dialogue's really good, and the romantic tension is good. That's about where the good ends. Uh, she likes to kind of tell stories that mix some sort of crime or mystery element in with the romance, and I really like that, and, I, and, and that's one of the aspects of her books that I really love. I didn't think that this particular crime mystery element was very good. Uh, the story is there's a girl who's, uh, I think she's a senior in college, and she's a computer science major, and she's really good with computers, and she's kind of a hacker, and she's got this kind of like background in hacking. Um, and the FBI hires her to do some work. It's kind of like an internship that may turn into a job, and that's all okay. But on top of it, she's also a model, 
which I didn't mind. I was like, okay, like, I kind of like that because, like, I think Carly Kloss has, like, got some ridiculous, like, biochemical engineering degree or something. And she's also a model. And it's like, okay, so that happens. And I kind of like that kind of outlandish uh, character development. Uh, but on top of being a model, she's also, like, kind of part of an abused family. And it just felt like the whole world was, like, weighing down on her. And it's like, okay, so she's really smart and really pretty. And, oh, she's also, like, her family's only source of income. And so there's all this, this tension. And she's estranged from her family. Oh, wait, no, she's not. And it's, so it's, it felt a little overdone. Um, and I think she would have, I think it would have been just fine with just her being smart and being pretty. Like, okay, yeah, like, let's have that. Uh, it also made, she, she also was really, really, really naive. And it bothered me because she never outgrew that throughout the story. And so that was frustrating. Uh, the guy was fine. He was... I felt like he didn't really have a lot of personality. But the thing that really, really bothered me was they sleep together and then, like, he doesn't talk to her for two months. And then he comes back and she's perfectly happy to talk to him. Like, like literally, like, no contact for two months and you're okay. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't like those types of storylines and Julie Garbage has always been really good at not delving into that kind of story and so it bummed me out that that's how this went uh, especially because it might be her last book and so yeah so it's I mean it's Julie Garwood she's an author that I will automatically buy I, she, I, I love her other books and even and even this one even though I didn't love it there's still stuff that I would want to go back and reread. So I gave it three out of five stars. Um, it was, it was a disappointment, which is, which is always a bummer from a favorite author. So, but sometimes it happens and you just got to hope that either she'll come out with something else in a couple of years and you'll enjoy that one. Or you know what? I have her other stories to go back to and really enjoy. And in fact, I'm going to, go back and finish rereading this particular series of books. Um, I think I've got, I think I've got like seven left, so there, there, there's a lot to read. Like, it's one bad book, or not even bad book, one mediocre book is not going to ruin it for me. Next, I have another book that I got from the library and I like so much that I went and bought, and that is Alex Approximately by Jen Bennett and <sighs> this book oh my gosh this book so it's a you've got mail or a, an affair not an affair to remember um the shop around the corner an affair to remember is referenced in a different movie um it's you've got mail slash shop around the corner retelling uh these two teenagers are communicating on a fan site for movies and they don't know each other and the girl ends up moving out to where the guy lives and you know things happen and you you already know that the person that she starts talking to in real life is the guy that she's talking to online but she doesn't know that and um so yeah it's really sweet I love all the movie references there are, um there are movie quotes at the beginning of each chapter let me see if I can find one real quick yeah so there are movie quotes right here you probably can't read it um, this one says, I shut everybody out, don't take it personally. It's Anna Kendrick and Pitch Perfect. I love that. I love all the movie references. I thought the romantic tension between the two leads was great. I thought the flirtations were great. The only thing is that there's a point at which you kind of... There's a point at which she should have figured out that the guy was the guy that she's talking to online. And it gets dragged out a little bit and... It's okay. It, it's it's kind of at the end of the book, and you, you know, you expect that, but at the same time you're kind of going like, come on, can't you see? It's it's him. It's him. So um, yeah, so that was a little disappointing that it kind of like deflated at the end. Uh, but other than that, I really really loved it. Uh, 
I gave it four out of five stars and like I said I loved it enough that I went and bought it because I was like I'm gonna reread this and I've already been rereading passages it's just I think the writing's really great um characters are great loved it absolutely would recommend it and then last but definitely not least is my favorite book of the month which was also the last book I read this month and that is Vengeance Road by Erin Bowman uh I did a thing I bought this I've been wanting to read this and I had it on my list and the deal was I thought it was at the library it wasn't so it was ten dollars on Amazon I thought well I'll buy it and if I don't like it well that'll teach me I loved it it's been really hard to not go out and buy the second book so the second book's actually not a sequel but it's like a companion novel that's supposed to happen in the same universe and maybe have some of the same characters but um, it's a western and it's got a female lead who's seeking revenge on the cowboy gang that has killed her father. Yes. That sounds right up my alley. Please. Yes. I loved it. I loved the writing. I loved the characters. I loved the setting. Like I said, it, it's been killing me that I can't go out and buy the other book. Uh, it's, yeah. I, <laughs> Five out of five stars. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know if you need to know anything else. It's, it's a revenge story, and it, it involves a girl who has to dress as a boy for a little while, and she teams up with a couple of other uh, young men, and it's it's a it's like reading a, a western film. It was so good. It was so fun. I loved it, and uh, yeah. I, it was such a good note to end the month on. I was really happy to have read it. So yeah, <laughs> that's all I read in the month of July. Can't believe it took me three weeks, two weeks uh, to get this video up. But hey, I got it up eventually. And hopefully August will finish up and I'll get that video out right at the end of August or the beginning of uh, September. But yeah, that's all I read this month. Um, if you like what you're seeing, Click the thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more, and comment down below on what you read in the month of July, or what you're reading in August, or maybe what you're looking forward to reading in September. And I'll see you next time. Bye!